Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yes, I would like to quickly guide you through the Marie Skodowska Curie actions as they will be under Horizon 2020 from uh, next year on. As you all know, the Marie Curie actions, uh, as they have been called up to now, are built on the, uh, the idea of excellence. It's about researcher, it's about training, and about skills. And it's about offering new opportunities for the career development of researchers uh, and also for uh, securing them or making them fit for jobs not only in academia but also outside of academia. And as you also know, I, I, I assume, there's one condition without which uh, the Marie Skodowska Marie Corrections uh, will not happen, and the, the condition is mobility. So researchers must be mobile, they must go to another country to pursue their research or research training. And as you see on this slide, uh, up to now we have Marie Curie actions implemented in more than 100, in more than 80 countries, and our researchers are from more than 130 nationalities, including, of course, uh, Hungarian. And I will show you a slide in a second about this. Another key feature of our uh, Marie Curie actions is the bottom-up nature. So we finance every kind of research. Whatever is proposed will then be put into eight broad categories in what we call panels and then evaluated against its, its peers, uh, peer uh, proposals. Yeah? And this is the distribution based on the number of finance projects in the end. Uh, here very, a slide which shows you the participation of uh, Hungarian institutions and fellows in the current Marie Curie Actions. As you can see, uh, 225 fellows have been hosted so far between 2007 and 2013 in Hungary, and 337 Hungarian nationals have been funded. And all this for a total of almost 30 million euros, and Hungarian institutions have participated 157 times out of which 23 SMEs. And the good thing here is the entire um, industry participation in Hungary is through SMEs. Yeah. So what? Um, what are the advantages of participating in a Marie Curie project? Herefore, I can show you just three high uh, three results of the, the interim evaluation we had uh, at the beginning of, of this year, which we finalized at the beginning of this year. So first of all, for an institution or a company or whatever, it is, law, it is quite obvious, it strengthens the collaboration between them through the fellows they are hosted and through the links that are created uh, within the project. Why should you participate? Because you could get in contact or you could collaborate with more, with, yeah, with a very high uh, uh, with a prestigious uh, academic institution which is uh, uh, in the Shanghai list, as you know. Two-thirds of all of the Shanghai top 500 institutions are actually participating in our, in our program. And what is also very important to know is that nine out of ten of the top investors, private investors in research are also participating in our actions. Yeah? And, and as a fellow, uh, the advantage is also that normally your, your career uh, prospects after the fellowship increase uh, tremendously. Yeah. So now, Marie Skodowska Career Actions on the Horizon 2020. We talk about this morning about simplification, streamlining, and I will show you now what we did in this respect also to, to honor what the Commission has uh, uh, promised. Uh, has promised. So first of all, the objective doesn't change a lot to, to what you know already. It's still about the um, intellectual cap, uh, capital of Europe, about the researchers themselves, about the people behind the research. And through the training and the research we, we allow them to do, we want them to ger generate new skills, knowledge, contribute to innovation, and in the end also to uh, new products and services which are marketable, of course. Yeah? 
Regarding the budget, um, it was mentioned already this morning, we have a budget of roughly 6.2 billion uh, euros over the next seven years, which is a 30% increase compared to FP7. Yeah? So we have 30% more funds for the, these, the, the following seven years than we had up to now. Yeah? Main features. So the name changes a little bit. So we thought it's time to honor also the Polish roots of, of Marie Curie. This is why we inserted her maiden name uh, uh, between her first name and her, her last name. So the, the actions will be called Marie Skodowska Curie actions. Some continuity, the funding levels as well as the broad schemes will be maintained. And I will show you a slide in, in a second about the schemes. Um, so you won't see too many changes in the, the kind of, of actions that can be funded. Yeah? The main features will also remain, so continue bottom-up approach. It's the interest of the researcher that prevails uh, and not a commission top-up, a uh, top-down uh, decision about uh, the, the topic to be funded, yeah? It is still about mobility, it is about the career development. We also would like to honor, as in the past, uh, uh, the gender balance. Of course, we, we can't, we haven't re reached 50-50 balance right now, but our goal was 40%, uh, so 40% of all researchers funded are, should be women, uh, up to yeah, last week, the latest statistics were that we have 38% in uh, under Marie, school, Marie Curie actions so far. So we want to continue this road and, and uh, in this in this direction, and continue to uh, support uh, women in research. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's about employment conditions. We want researchers to get a decent salary for the work they do, so they can actually do the work without having to uh, worry about uh, uh, yeah, yeah, their income. So this is why we actually provide rather attractive conditions uh, for the individuals. We have some simplification in the implementation. So for uh, this morning, we heard something about unit costs. Uh, uh, and this is actually what we are going to do under Marie Skodowska Cree. Funding will be based only and exclusively on the basis of, of unit costs. I will show you also a slide about this, um, which also means that indirect costs will be covered by a unit. Yeah? So you don't have to calculate anything about these indirect costs. It will be paid out uh, as, as a unit. Yeah? Um, and another simplification we did is we broadened what the term of yeah, what we call industry. Yeah? Now we will only have two categories, uh, which are academic, which are research institutes, higher education institutions, and then non-academic. Yeah? So it's easier for uh, distinguishing and also for uh, finding a suitable partner uh, under our actions where we, for example, require participation of both, both sectors. Yeah? Um, yeah. What do we want to do with this program? We want attract, of course, and retain research talent. Yeah? We want to offer innovative training schemes which are not only about the research but which also enable the researchers to acquire um, uh, some soft skills, which require them skills that are needed also on the labor market, which prepare the researchers actually also for the labor market next to academia. Because we also know that most of the researchers nowadays will not find a place in academia. So they need to be prepared to also uh, find a job on the uh, yeah, normal labor market. Mm. We want to equip the researchers with new knowledge and skills um, and we want also to co cooperate closely with the member states notably through the co-fund scheme we have under Marie Skodowska Curie Actions. And how will this be done? So first of all I said something about streamlining the actions. So here these are the acronyms of 
the actions we had under the Marie Curie program so far, and how will they look like? For, first of all, we have the, what are called right now, initial training networks, they will be rebaptized. they will become innovative training networks, so what's in the name, but uh, I will tell you also that in a second. Um, and they will support only early stage researchers. For those who are familiar with the current scheme, now we have the possibility to also have experienced researchers under an ITN. This will no longer be the case in the future. Yeah? All individual fellowships we had, be they inter-European, international outgoing, international incoming, career integration grants, we have all these four, we have these four different schemes. They will all be merged into one scheme which is called individual fellowships. They will be only for experienced researchers in the future. And here we will have two schemes, which are yeah, European fellowships, which are the ones taking place in Europe, and global fellowships, the ones that go out of, uh, of Europe. Yeah? And here we will also have, in order to uh, honor what we had in the past with the career integration grants, we have some career restart grants and reintegration grants as well. Yeah? And then before we had some cooperative schemes, one was between industry and academia, the YAPS, and one was the international scheme. They will both be merged into one scheme which will be called RISE, Research and Innovative Staff Exchanges, and they will do yeah, what the other two actions did in the past, exchanges if it's within Europe between the two different sectors, if it is without, uh, outside, with, outside, with institutions outside of Europe or, or companies outside of Europe, they will do the international exchange. Yeah? And then co-fund, for those who know the system right now, the, the action right now, right under Marie Curie, it was only for fellowship programs. From next year on, under Marie Skodowska Curie, we will also open this scheme for doctoral programs, yeah? for monocyte doctoral programs. Yeah? So now, yeah, I will skip this one. Now, very quickly, I will go through the different schemes we have, the four main actions. So innovative training networks. Yeah? It's, of course, about doctoral training. It's about giving a new generation of, of, of uh, PhD candidates uh, some creative entrepreneurial uh, skills and uh, to make them participate in, in innovation. We will have three different schemes and you know already the um, European Joint Doctorate under Marie Curie where we'll have uh, a compulsory participation of the non-academic sector in here, um, the European Industrial Doctorate where um, 50% uh, of the time must be spent in, in the non-academic sector. Yeah? We will have the normal European training networks, um, which are networks which do not necessarily lead to a degree, but most of the time they actually are there for PhD programs. And we will have European joint doctorates, which you may probably know from the current Erasmus Mundus program, the Erasmus Mundus joint doctorates, where uh, several uh, um, higher education institutions get together to offer a joint double or, or multiple degree to the researchers that take part in, in, in the program. Um, yeah, here just a slide with the different um, uh, implementation modalities of the innovative training networks. So. You have the normal European training network where you need at least three partners and the exchange is then done between the partners uh, uh, of the consortium and you can have of course more partners uh, on top of the, the three. Um, at the bottom you have a scheme for the European Industrial Doctorate. There you need to have at least one partner from the academia and one partner from the non-academia uh, and you can have additional partners in this scheme as well. Yeah? But for this specific one, you only need two participants, while for the other ones, you need at least three from three different 
member states or associated countries. And um, uh, in the example of the European Joint Doctorate, you need, of course, a minimum of three academic institutions, the higher education institutions that are able to confer a degree because you need to have a joint degree within that uh, consortium. ITNs, and this is uh, some information taken from the draft work program, which you actually find already published on the Horizon 2020 website. Yeah. Um, the call will be launched on the, the, the 2014 call will be launched on the 11th of December. We will have a budget of roughly 4.5 million. And for EIDs and uh, European Joint Doctorates, there is a specific uh, uh, budget envelope set aside for these two uh, implementation modalities. Um, the maximum size of such a project is 240 research a month, yeah, which means roughly 15 PhD candidates for three years. Yeah? And um, the fellowship may last for the individual one up to 36 months, while the project itself can last 48 months. Yeah? Um, yes, individual fellowships, I don't want to go into the details about the objectives and uh, the scope and the impact. I think this is fairly, fairly clear. Yeah? Um, but it, it is, as I said, about attracting researchers to Europe or exchanging them within Europe or giving European re or researchers in Europe the possibility to spend some, times, uh, some time abroad to uh, acquire new skills over there. Yeah? This call will be launched a little bit later this year. Yeah? Um, uh, not this year, sorry. It will be launched in early 2015, if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in March. Uh, and there we have a budget of 240 million only this year. Yeah? Um, what you need to know, the maximum duration of a project here is two years for global fellowships because uh, we do not only send the researchers abroad, we also want them to come back. So there's always this string attached of one year uh, uh, return phase to Europe. These ones may last up to three years. Yeah? And I do, just would like to uh, uh, repeat once more, this is for experienced researchers. Yeah? So it's for, which means researchers who have at least four years of experience or uh, a PhD degree. Yeah? And the focus of these uh, projects is on the career development of the researcher. Um, and what is also new under this scheme is an optional secondment um, during the project implementation phase. So during the maximum duration of, uh, six, of, of uh, sorry, two years, a six-month secondment option is possible. Um, uh, and this can be within Europe, of course, and to another sector, uh, preferably. Yeah? We will also have a specific panel for career reintegration grants. So for people who have stopped, or for researchers who have stopped for a while researching and who would like to come back to research, we offer a specific scheme to, um, and, and a specific panel where they can only, where they only compete with the ones who are uh, reintegrating into or restarting their career in research. Yeah. Then the research staff exchange scheme. There. Uh, this is about staff exchange. So here, uh, we do not fund, as in the past, uh, the recruitment of researchers, but we fund the exchange of existing staff. Yeah? If this is within Europe, it must be to another sector. So it's always then within Europe, academia, non-academia cooperation. If it is outside of Europe, it can be within the same sector. Yeah? And why do we do this? Because we want to uh, help 
participants to transfer the knowledge, um, to acquire new knowledge somewhere else, and then to transfer it back to their home institution or home, home company. Yeah? Um, and it's, this scheme must always be around a research project. Yeah? So you must define with your partners a project, and around this project you are exchanging stuff. Yeah? Yeah. And this is just, but I will very quickly go through this, uh, the possibilities of exchanges between you know, member states and associated countries and third countries. Um, but what, what I just told you, if you remain within Europe, it must be intersectoral. If you have uh, um, third country participants, it can be an exchange between the same sector. Yeah? And for this scheme, we have this year 70 million, yeah. which, um, uh, and next year, because it's a new scheme, we are a little bit cautious. We wanted to see how it will work. And next year, uh, the planning is to increase the budget for this scheme by 10 uh, more millions. Yeah. Project may last a maximum of four years, and you need to have at least participants from three different countries. Um, and as I said, it's about sconding staff, not about recruiting. Yeah? Co-fund, and this is the last of the main uh, Marie Skodowska Curie actions. Here we put money aside to inject it into new or existing uh, fellowship or doctoral programs that are implemented in the member states or associated countries. Yeah? Uh, compared to the past, as I said before, we have the new possibility of funding also doctoral programs. Um, and uh, it is those programs we fund that have an international angle to them. Yeah? So mobility is also here a requirement if you um, want to apply under this, under this scheme. Yeah? Um, it is so either for attracting researchers to your country or, or to your institution or sending them out uh, uh, somewhere else. Yeah? Um, the important thing or new thing under uh, CoFund is, and uh, yeah, my colleague Clara del Toro explained this already I think this morning, uh, we will have synergies and we will have the possibility to co-fund this um, also with other European instruments, yeah? which means um, the European social investment funds can also inject money into uh, these projects if this is foreseen in your uh, national or regional plans. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is what I said, so we will have doctoral and fellowship programs. Yeah, And here we will have a budget of 80 million in 2014, uh, out of which 30 million are reserved for doctoral programs. Yeah? And uh, you can see a budget, uh, project here can be actually quite big. You can receive up to 10 million per single applicant per call. Yeah? While for the other schemes, the funding rate is 100%. For this one, as the name already says, it's co-fund, it will be 50% for the established unit costs. Yeah? Um, and last but not least, because this is not a, a classical Marie Curie action, it's a more support action, it's the European Researchers' Night. I just would like to draw your attention to this one. It's, a, it's an outreach and promotion action about the a researcher career and what does research actually contribute to society and well-being. Yeah? And every year at the end of September, we organize the European Researchers' Night. Uh, in yeah, more than 300 cities around Europe. And this is a way of bringing researcher clo research closer to the ordinary citizen and also bringing it into the classroom and um, encouraging young people to think about and to start probably a career in research. I just wanted to mention it, but also here we will have a call which will be launched on the 11th of uh, December, a budget of 8 million, which is of course small compared uh, to the other ones, but this is just for financing one night a year in Europe. Yeah? 
And uh, this year's call, uh, yeah, the, the call we launch in, um, in, uh, on the 11th of uh, December will actually cover two years. So if you are thinking about this, about um, making, creating some fun activity to promote uh, uh, research and research career, this may be something you could probably have, have a look at. Yeah. Okay, um, I think I have to round up so very quickly about the EU contribution. As I said in the beginning, everything will be based on unit costs. And the unit for Marie Skodowska Curie Actions will be the person months. So, how many months a researcher has spent on the project in your institution is the basis for calculating all the costs and all the, the funds you will receive. Yeah? Um, and uh, what will be new uh, under Marie Skowska Curie is, first of all, we have a new approach to the country coefficient. You may probably know the living allowance in the past we paid for the um, researcher was subject to country coefficient. This will be still true under Marie Skowska Curie, but it will not change every year. Because in the past, sometimes we found deviations in the country coefficient by 20% from one year to the other, and then it went up, it went down 20% and went up again 15, which is, of course, has nothing to do with the situation on the ground. Yeah? So what we will do from next year on is we will take the average of uh, FP7 and apply this for the first four years uh, as a country coefficient. Yeah? Um, we also have recalculated some of the uh, unit costs, um, but they stay more or less the same as you know them from the past. Yeah? And we will have, as I said before, a dedicated unit cost for the management and the overheads. And here on this slide, a, a schematic overview about the unit cost. So all you have to think about in the future is, as I said before, how how many months will a or has a researcher spent in my institution and how many researchers did I have? So if you had, let's say, three researchers and they spent 54 months in your institutions, this is all you need to put into the reporting form because then on the participant portal, the form itself will calculate all the other costs for you, even the overheads because un like what was said this morning, uh, contrary to what was said this morning, we will not apply a 25% rule to the overheads. You will get a lump sum, or you will get also unit costs, sorry, for the management and overhead costs, which are dependent on the number of researchers you have and the months spent in your institution. Yeah? And then the calculation is very easily done. Yeah? And this goes through for all actions. And for the RISE action, as you can see here, you will receive 2,000 per staff member exchange per month, and then the rest is also calculated automatically. Yeah? And then uh, let me quickly go through this. For co-fund, just for you, uh, the explanation, up there you find the unit costs. Yeah? And what will Marie Skodowska curie contribute uh, to a project? It's 50% of these costs up there. Yeah? So not 50% of your real costs, yeah, but 50% of what is uh, indicated in this table. Yeah? I have here a little graph that explains how this is uh, calculated. I don't want to go into the details because we don't have a lot of time, but last week we had a, an NCP meeting with all the NC national contact points from across Europe and, and actually, uh, yeah, the world almost, and we explained this in detail to them. So if you have any questions, your NCP should be able to uh, explain this in detail to you. Yeah. Voila. And this is the expected impact. Um, over the seven years, we expect to finance more than 65,000 researchers. 2014 alone, we will be intend to, to uh, fund 10,000 people. Yeah. Um, so you might uh, be interested to immediately participate in the first year. Yeah, um, yeah. and the rest, I mean, it's, uh, it's quite self-explanatory. If you are interested now in the work program with many more details, 
just go on the Horizon 2020 website and there you'll find the draft work program as it was actually adopted by the, what we call the shadow program committee uh, a couple of weeks ago. And there you find also the draft work programs of uh, uh, most of the other um, uh, actions under Horizon 2020. Thanks a lot. That's all I wanted to say. And I hope I didn't confuse you, but I was, uh, uh, yeah, you, you understood what I, I tried to explain to you. Thank you.